Today, we're diving deep into the differences of large language model architectures. If you're learning about AI, understanding why different architectures exist is what separates people who really get the technology from those who just use it. And if you're building AI applications, choosing the wrong model architecture could mean losing hundreds of thousands of dollars in compute costs in efficiency. Let me explain why we have different AI architectures, what problems each one solves, and why these differences directly impact what you can build and how much it costs. First, let's understand why we even need different architectures. Transformers are the architecture behind most models you've heard of. ChatGPT and Claude use transformers. Transformers excel at understanding complex relationships in text. Think of transformers as reading a book where you can instantly see how every sentence connects to every other sentence. You can immediately link chapter 1 to chapter 10, spot patterns across the entire text, and understand complex relationships. It's why ChatGPT can maintain context throughout long conversations and understand subtle references. But here is why this becomes a problem. To compare every sentence to every other sentence, the computer needs massive amounts of memory and processing power. If your document doubles in length, the cost quadruples. Process something four times longer and costs go up 16 times. This exponential growth is why AI companies charge a lot more for longer conversations. Modern graphics card GPUs have limited memory. Most GPUs struggle to handle the volume when conversations are too long, which creates a hard limit of how long the chats can be. This is why researchers started looking for alternatives that could process longer sequences without these exponential costs. The first alternative approach is going back to an older idea called RNNs, which stands for Recurrent Neural Networks, but making them actually work better. Original RNNs processed information like a human reading a book, one word at a time, keeping notes as you go. The problem was that their notebook was too small. By the time they reached chapter 10, they would forget chapter 1. Important details would fade away, making them not really good at understanding long documents. Mamba, developed by Albert Gu and Tree Dao, is the breakthrough that made RNNs competitive again. The original Mamba models range from 130 million to 2.8 billion parameters. While these seem small compared to GPT-4, they can process sequences that would cause transformers to run out of memory. Think of how Mamba operates as creating an intelligent notebook that automatically decides what to remember. When Mamba encounters important information, it keeps it in the permanent storage. When it sees filler content, it lets it fade away quickly. The breakthrough here is that this happens automatically. The model learns what's important without being told. For companies processing legal documents, scientific papers, or code bases, this can change everything. The use cases that may be economically impossible with transformers become way more affordable with Mamba. RWKV, which stands for Receptance Weighted Key Value, is another modern RNN variant, and it takes a different approach. Models here range from 1.6 billion to 14 billion parameters. It figured out how to get transformer-like quality without the quadratic cost through a mathematical trick. Instead of comparing everything to everything, it maintains running statistics that update incrementally. This practical result is the same. You can process extremely long sequences without running out of memory or money. The RWKV6 world models support over 100 languages and can handle context length of 32,000 plus tokens with linear scaling instead of quadratic. Recurrent Gemma from Google DeepMind brings efficiency to the Gemma family of models. 
The 2 billion and 9 billion parameter versions use Griffin architecture, which combines gated linear recurrences with local attention. They achieve similar quality to transformer-based Gemma models, while being dramatically more efficient for long sequences. Striped Hyena 7B from Together AI is actually a hybrid, but heavily relies on state space models similar to Mamba. It can process sequences up to 128k tokens efficiently, something that would be prohibitively expensive with pure transformers of similar size. ResNet models from Microsoft Research also have this unique ability to switch between parallel training and efficient RNN-style inference. Microsoft hasn't released large public ResNet models, but their architecture influenced several research projects and private deployments. So why aren't these models as well known as GPT or Claude? They're newer and the ecosystem is still developing. Most AI applications were built assuming transformer style processing. Adapting to RNN style models requires rethinking how you handle context and prompting. But for specific use cases like document processing or continuous monitoring, they're potentially a really good fit. The limitation of these modern RNNs explains why transformers still exist. RNNs can't easily jump back to check specific earlier information. If you need to find all mentions of a specific topic throughout the document, transformers can do this instantly, but RNNs have to rely on what they remembered to save in their state. Is the difference between having an entire book available versus relying just on your notes. Now let's understand why the mixture of experts models, the MOE, became popular. Regular AI models are like having one incredibly smart person answer every question. Mixture of experts models are like having a team of specialists. When a math question comes in, the math expert handles it. When a history question comes in, the history experts take over. You might have um, eight experts total, but only two work on any given question. Why would we build models that way? The total knowledge in the model can be huge. Mixtro has 47 billion parameters storing information, but you only use 13 billion for any specific task. DeepSeek has 671 billion total parameters, but only activates 37 billion per forward pass. So it's like having an entire university of professors available, but consulting only the relevant ones for each question. You get the knowledge of a massive model with the running cost of a smaller one. The routing system that decides which experts to use is learned automatically during training. The model figures out which experts are good at what without being explicitly programmed. This specialization emerges naturally. One expert might become great at writing code, another at answering science questions, and another at creative writing. So why doesn't everyone use a mixture of experts? The operational complexity is significant. Different experts often live on different graphics cards, so information needs to be routed between them. So it's like running a company where departments are in different buildings and coordination becomes challenging. You also need enough simultaneous users to keep all the experts busy. Otherwise, you're paying for unused capacity. There is also a load balancing problem. If everyone wants the math expert and nobody needs the poetry expert, you've essentially built an expensive regular model. The architecture includes mechanisms to force balanced usage, but this can mean sending questions to less qualified experts just to spread the load. Uh, running mixture requires sophisticated model parallelism across multiple GPUs. And small teams often struggle with deployment, which is why many default to smaller dense models, despite mixture of experts being more efficient at scale. So now let's look at a hybrid architecture that combines multiple approaches. So for different types of information, we may need different types of processing. Jamba from AI21 Labs is the most prominent production hybrid. It combines three different approaches. Mamba layers for efficient sequence processing, attention layers for complex reasoning, 
and expert routing for specialization. The architecture places attention layers strategically about every seventh layer, creating checkpoints where a model can look at everything and reorganize its understanding. There are other approaches like Zamba 2, 7B, and Griffin and Hawk models from DeepMind. So why would we combine architectures? Different parts of understanding language requires different capabilities. Reading through a narrative sequentially is different from understanding how variables in code relate to each other. Sequential processing is different from logical reasoning. The challenge with hybrids explains why they're not everywhere yet, because designing them requires extensive experimentation to find those right combinations. Training them is trickier because different components learn at different rates. Debugging is harder because there are more things that can go wrong. Now let's understand why these architectural differences matter for real applications. For chatbots and coding assistants, transformers still are the best. The conversation lengths are manageable, so the quadratic scaling is acceptable. The quality is proven. We know transformers can handle complex reasoning and maintain context. The ecosystem is more mature with tons of optimizations and tools, so it's like choosing a reliable car for daily commuting, which might use a little bit more gas, but you get everywhere reliably. For large document processing and analysis, modern RNNs may work well. Law firms analyzing thousands of contracts can do so more affordably. Researchers can process entire scientific literature databases. Companies can monitor social media streams continuously, so these applications are more affordable with linear scaling. For diverse API services with many users, mixture of expert models can provide the best economics. Because different users need different capabilities, expert utilization stays high. The infrastructure complexity can be justified by dramatically lower per request costs. So it's like running a medical clinic and having specialists make sense when you have many varied patients. For cutting edge applications that need both efficiency and capability, hybrids are worth exploring, they're worth the complexity. When you need to understand both local patterns and global relationships, when you need both specialization and general knowledge, hybrids provide that path forward. So major AI labs are using them for next generation models that need to handle everything from casual chat to complex reasoning. The business impact of choosing the right architecture is massive. Understanding why these architectures exist and what problems they solve makes you super valuable in the AI industry. When someone proposes using transformers for processing entire books, you understand why costs will explode and can suggest alternatives. When someone wants to use iron ends for tasks requiring complex cross-referencing, you know the limitations and can propose solutions. When someone suggests mixture of experts for a simple, uniform task, you can explain why the overhead may not be worth it. So start experimenting with different architectures now, take a real problem that you're working on, and try solving it with different approaches. Measure not just whether it works, but how much it costs, how fast it runs, and how much memory it needs. Build small prototypes that leverage each architecture's strength. Understanding these differences through hands-on experience is what separates architects from users. Those who understand why different architectures exist and what problems they solve will build the products that define the next generation of AI applications. Traditional transformers are not going away, but they're no longer the only answer. Make sure to subscribe for more deep dives into AI architecture and engineering. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Your reality has changed. You're stuck in your career. You're either using AI or being used. Do you still believe success is guaranteed? You feel it's time to wake up. Old strategies don't work anymore. Welcome to the real world. It will never be the same again. You need to fight for your future. Learn to spot truth from lies. I will help you. Together, we will win.